Well, this is Stick of the Dump, Chapter 2, Digging with Stig, Part 3. So we just finished off with, however, one of them, those tins that have got bit pinched, did fit inside the other, which seemed to please Stig quite a lot. Barney thought it was a bit childish of Stig to sit there playing like a baby with plastic bricks when there was all that work to be done. But Stig went on, seriously worrying over the problem of fitting them together. He found that by pinching them together at the end of a tin, he could make it fit inside the next one. And soon he had four or five fitted together like the length of a stove pie. Of course, a stovepipe. Barney knew there was something that Stig needed badly. You are so clever, Stig, he said. You've made a chimney. Stig looked blank. He didn't know he needed a chimney. He didn't know what a chimney was. Certainly he'd made one, but if he hadn't been for Barney, he would never have known. Working together, they fitted all the tins, one inside the other, until they had a pipe that was taller than either of them. With Barney directed, they carried it to the smoky den, where it was too long to stand upright. Now, all we've got to do is poke it through the roof, said Barney. Stig looked doubtfully at him, but together they managed it quite easily, and they pushed it through a crack between the linoleum and a sheet of corrugated iron. But now what? They couldn't just leave it hanging above the fire. I know, exclaimed Barney, the bath. He left Stig patiently holding the chimney and went and fetched the tin bath. What luck! It had a rusty hole in the bottom, which only needed a little work with the boot scraper to make it big enough to fit the chimney through. Stig was dimly beginning to see what Barney was trying to do. Together they built a fireplace of chalk blocks and big flints, rested the bath upside down on top and there was a mantelpiece and chimney with the flue leading from the hole in the bath through the roof and into the upturned air. Barney lit the fire which Stig had laid as they built the fireplace, threw some additional scraps of paper and twigs onto it. Once the smoke had le learnt its way, it went roaring up through the pipe. They rushed outside and there was and there it was coming out of what's like what looked like a proper chimney pot sticking through the roof. Stig watched, fascinated. There you are, Stig, said Barney. Now you've got a proper fireplace people can come and visit you without getting smoke in their eyes. Actually, Stig didn't seem to care very much about having the place full of smoke, but he was pleased with his fireplace, as if it had been a new toy and kept putting twigs and leaves on the fire so that he could go out and see the smoke coming out at the other end. Barney was so proud of his invention and he looked around for something else to invent. He saw the stack of jam jars. What had he brought those for? It would be just too dull just to keep them f to keep food in. Stig's den wasn't that sort of a place. He had to think of a new job for these jam jars. What had he thought Stig's house needed most? A chimney? Well, he's got that now. Chimney? Yes. And... Can you remember? A window! A window! Well, yes, of course. Windows are made of glass. And so were jam jars. But what about the shape? Doors were made of wood and so were clothes pegs. Ships were made of steel and so were tin openers, but you can't make a ship out of a tin opener or a door out of a clothes peg. The shape is all wrong. You could hammer. You couldn't hammer glass flat, could you? So he picked up the boot scraper. No, of course not. Stig had stacked the jars one on top of each other, lying them on their sides. They made a sort of wall of glass like that but they rolled about, and of course there were gaps in between the jars. Barney looked at one side of the den, the darkest side, which really, really needed a window. It was built of wooden boxes from the dump, bottoms outwards, open tops inwards. And he took the digging tool and knocked the bottom out of one. So now 
There was an open square where light could come in, but so did the wind, and Stig didn't seem pleased at all sitting in that draught. Stig likes to be snug, thought Barney. He carried the jam jars in and stacked them in the frame of the box. They fitted quite well, the light came in, but the draught came in too. Stig got up and looked at the gaps between the jars, grunted and went out of the den. Barney followed him wondering. Stig led the way along the bottom of the cliff to where there'd been a landslide and quite a large chunk of cliff top had come down in one piece. Between the topsoil and the chalk was a layer of red clay. Good, damp, squidgy stuff you could make model animals with. Stig began to dig out lumps of clay with his fingers. Barney found another good clay mine and did the same. They got as much as they could carry and took it back to the den. And from the outside, Stig set to work to fill the gaps between the jam jars. They had to make two or more journeys before all the jars were firmly bedded in the clay and then Barney carefully wiped the smears off the bottom of the jars with a rag. Then they stood and admired their window. They even made faces at each other, one standing inside and the other standing outside. It certainly let the light in, even though it was late in the afternoon and there was not much light to be had. Well, well, said Barney, that's that. It was a thing he'd often heard his grandad say when he'd finished a job. He was tired after all the inventing he'd done and he went to sit down and then he saw all the plates of tin that Stig had cut out lying round on the floor. He gathered them up. There must be a use for these. And he went back to the window and found that the discs fitted exactly over the ends of the jars if you pressed them into the soft clay. There were just enough to go around. There you are, Stig, like on a ship to shut out the portholes. If you don't want people to look in or you want to shut the dark out. There was a feeling in the evening air that darkness was coming and it would be snug to sit by the new fireplace and watch the fire go up the chimney. But Barney something suddenly remembered something and stood up with his mouth open. Stig, he said, I've got to go home. I mean, all the way home. Probably won't be staying with Grandma till Christmas now. Stig looked at him. Stig, said Barney, when I come back again, you will still be here, won't you? Stig didn't answer but he went to a little niche in the chalk wall, poked about among the things in there and brought something back which he gave to Barney. He looked at it. It was a little chipped flint, perfectly shaped like a flat Christmas tree. Very sharp. An arrowhead, Barney gasped. For me? Oh, thank you, Stig. I, I really must go now. I'll see you at Christmas. You will be here at Christmas, won't you, Stig? Goodbye. And then he ran off. As he made his way along the bottom of the pit, he felt he knew the way there better than anywhere else in the world. And he felt that Stig's house was as much his home as anywhere else. After all, it was like drawing pictures. Once you put a chimney and a window on a house, you really have made a house. That's the end of chapter two.